In this video, we're going to be looking at every mutation in Grounded. I'm going to let you know which ones to use, which ones to avoid, and how to unlock every one of them. First up is going to be Lil Fiss. Lil Fiss is unlocked by getting 40, 100, or 200 kills with unarmed attacks. Unarmed attacks means you can have nothing in your hand when you're punching. You can have a shield in your offhand, but if you're holding a pebblet or hitting with any other object, it's not going to count. So make sure you have that shield in your offhand to block incoming attacks. What this does is it gives your unarmed attacks a 25, 50, or 75% chance to increase your unarmed damage by 2% based on the phase. This can stack, unlike all the other mutations we're going to talk about, that 2% will stack on top of itself. This mutation will proc every approximately 0.63 seconds because of how fast you can punch. So it is very useful, especially if you're going with unarmed combat. Do I recommend using unarmed combat? Probably not unless you're super experienced and can perfect block a lot with the shield, but it can be very useful and fun to try out, especially on beefy enemies when you're stacking those punches up. I will mention right now before we get through this one and all the next, the next several that are going to involve any type of weapons to unlock, these can only be unlocked against neutral or aggressive creatures. You cannot unlock them against harmless creatures. So if you're trying to go out and farm a bunch of weevils or aphids, it does not work on those anymore. It used to, but they do not anymore. So make sure you're taking out neutral or aggressive creatures. The neutral creatures will be things like the red worker ants, where if you attack them, they attack back, ladybugs, or of course, any of the aggressive creatures like the spiders or anything else that would normally attack you on site. Second on our list is going to be Chopper. Chopper is unlocked by killing 40, 100, or 200 enemies with axes. This gives your axes attacks a 5, 8, or 10% chance to stagger enemies. Now, this one is pretty, pretty useless. I'm going to be honest here. It's one of the first ones I'm going to say I would never use. The reason for that is it procs every 7 seconds with one-handed axes, but only every 10.33 seconds on average with the two-handed sour battle axe. So basically, if you're using this thing in combat, it's just not going to proc very often, and the effect from it is just not very good. So I would not recommend ever using Chopper, even if you're using an axe as your main weapon. Third on our list is going to be Smasher. Smasher is unlocked by getting 40, 100, or 200 kills with hammers. This gives your hammer attacks a 15, 25, or 30% chance to reduce enemy attack speed by 20% for 10 seconds. This will proc about every 4.12 seconds using the three hammers that are in the game right now. Now, this one's going to be better than the Chopper. It's still not as good as some others we're going to talk about. If you're using a hammer as your main weapon, it's probably worth using because getting that extra 20% or reducing that 20% attack speed on enemies is going to be useful, especially if you're fighting beefy enemies. I'd rate it like mid-tier. I would not personally use it myself because I very rarely, if ever, use a hammer as a weapon just because they're just not worth it in terms of DPS. Next on our list is going to be Javelinier. Javelinier is the first mutation we've, we're going to be looking at today that's an S-tier. This thing is definitely worth using all the time if you're using a spear. Spears have among the highest DPS per tier. In fact, the tier 2 Bone Trident and Stinger Spear have better DPS than several tier 3 weapons. So the Javelinier, what this is unlocked by, is getting 40, 100, or 200 kills with spears. It increases the damage of thrown spears by 10, 20, or 30 percent depending on the phase. It also gives spear attacks a 15, 25, or 30 percent chance to cause enemies to take 20 percent increased damage for 10 seconds. That and it also procs every 1.54 seconds. That's basically every couple attacks this thing is going to proc. And what that means is you're going to be dealing 20 percent extra damage. So not only are you going to have a high DPS weapon in the spears, you're also going to be dealing even more damage because you're going to be reducing the enemy's armor, which is going to mean they're going to be taking extra damage. Next up is going to be Assassin. Assassin is unlocked by getting 40, 100, or 200 kills with daggers and also the scythe, the mantis scythe. So this effect gives you the dagger attacks 5, 10, or 15% chance to bleed enemies. Bleed does 20 damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. So essentially, if it procs, it'll give you an extra 100 damage over the course of the 10 seconds. It procs every 2.5 seconds with daggers, only every 5.25 seconds with a scythe. I would say it's useful for using both of them. I would definitely use it if you're using daggers as it's going to proc pretty frequently. Next up on our list is going to be Sharpshooter. This is unlocked by getting 40, 100, or 200 kills with bows. You can either use the regular bows or the crossbows. This gives bow attacks a 5, 10, or 15% chance to slow enemies by 95% for 2 seconds. It's going to proc every 10.25 seconds with the sprig bow or the insect bow, every 17.5 seconds with the crow crossbow or the black ox crossbow. This is probably the worst mutation that's weapon related in the game. I would never recommend using this. The fact that it only gives the status effect of slow for two seconds basically means it's going to slow the enemy down and then it's immediately going to get back into combat. The fact that it takes so long to proc is also making it makes it basically completely useless. This thing would have to have a dub, basically doubling of the chance for this thing to work to even be considered using it. So even if you're using a bow as your main weapon or you use a bow as a secondary weapon, I would never recommend wasting a slot with Sharpshooter. Next up is going to be Barbarian. Barbarian is unlocked by getting 40, 100, or 200 kills with club attacks. Gives your club attacks a 15, 20, 25% chance to put you into rage for 10 seconds. What that means is you'll deal increased damage for all weapons by 20% while reducing the time you have to perfect block to basically where you cannot perfect block. It's going to take 2.8 seconds to proc with the pinch whacker, 
3.36 with the Salt Morningstar and 4.95 with all their clubs in general. I would recommend if you're going to use this, use it with one-handed clubs because since it's going to basically make it where it's impossible for you to perfect block, you will be able to have a shield in your offhand, so you could block with that. You can also block with the weapons, but it'd be better to use a shield because the shield is going to give you far more protection than any weapon you're going to be holding. I would not recommend using this with the two-handed clubs because of their slow attack speed. It's basically, when it procs, it's going to take longer to proc. It's also not going to give you that much benefit because of the slow attack speeds. You're not going to get that many attacks off. If you fought any quick attacking enemies, you'll know that it's very hard to even get three attacks in before having to block. So essentially, this the Barbarian Mutation, I do not recommend using it unless you're using the Pinch Whacker or maybe the Salt Morningstar, but definitely don't use it with any two-hand club. Next up is going to be Blade Master. Blade Master is unlocked by getting 40, 100, 200 kills with swords. The swords in this case do include the needles, which look like they're rapiers. They do stabbing damage, but they are the swords as well as all the other swords in the game. This gives your sword attacks a 5, 10, or 15% chance to make all sword attacks cost 20% less stamina for 5 seconds. This rivals the sharpshooter and the chopper among the worst mutations of all the weapon ones, and actually one of the worst mutations in the game. The reason for that is the one-handed swords only use about 5 or 6 st um, stamina, and the two-handed use about 12 stamina. So when this thing procs, which is not that frequent, it's going to only give you basically save you one stamina for the one-handed swords and two stamina for the two-handed swords. And if you look at how much stamina they use in general, it's just not ever going to be beneficial to you. For the needles, it's going to give proc every about 3.08 seconds. For the one hand, other one-handed swords, about 3.8 seconds. And for the two-handed swords, the Antlion Greatsword and the Spicy Coltana, it's going to take about 6.89 seconds. I would never recommend using Blade Master even if your sword, if you even if you're maining a sword or using a sword very frequently. Widow Wizard is one of the new mutations added in 1.0. This is unlocked by getting one 100 or 200 kills with the state one of the staves. There are three different effects for this, depending on which staff you're using. So for the mint staff, this is going to give mint staffs a the mint staff a 5, 15, or 25% chance to slow enemies by 30 seconds for 5 seconds. That'll proc about every 4 seconds with that staff. With the sour staff, it's going to give the sour staff attacks 5, 15, or 25% chance to apply an additional 10 stun. That's going to proc about every 4.3, or excuse me, every 6.05 seconds. And then for the spicy, it's going to give your spicy staffs a 15, 25, 35% chance to apply a burn, dealing 10 spicy damage a second for five seconds, so essentially 50 extra damage. That's going to proc every about 4.3 seconds. I would say this is probably useful for if you're using the, using the staves, honestly, in all cases. With the Sour Staff, with it not procking that often, and with the Sour Staff already doing a ton of stun, it might not be that useful. It would probably be useful for the Spicy Staff, although I will say the Spicy Staff seems most useful against early game enemies, specifically the Spiders, which are weak to Spicy damage, and that 50 extra damage over the five seconds probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. I kind of rate this like a mid tier in terms of the weapon ones. So Parry Master is unlocked by getting 25, 50, or 100 perfect blocks. The perfect block, of course, is when you block and then it gives you a little ting thing sound and the little spark comes off so you'll know you did a perfect block. The easiest way to unlock this is going to be to perfect block Law Mites. Go find yourself a single Law Might, isolate it, and just sit there and perfect block over and over and over again. You can get the tier three for this unlock pretty quickly by just doing that. You'll also want to learn to do perfect blocks against all enemies anyway, because honestly, especially if you're playing on woe mode, perfect blocks are necessary, otherwise you're going to get shredded. What this does is it gives your perfect blocks a 100% chance to return 5, 10, or 15 stamina instantly. Now, this is pretty useful if you're not good at managing your stamina. If you're late game and you have, you've already upgraded your stamina via the milk molar buffs, or you're using any kind of smoothies or anything else to give you additional stamina, it's probably not going to be that useful because you're probably not going to burn through it that much. Early game, it's going to be useful, though, when you only have that base 100 stamina, and especially if you're not good at managing your stamina like me. Next up is going to be Meat Shield. So the next three are going to be purchasable from the Science Shop in, from Burgle. This one's unlocked. Or this one's available right away at the beginning. It costs 300 raw science. What this does is it increases your max health by 30. Early game, that's going to mean a 30% increase as your base health is 100. If you've got max milk molars, which you can add 85, so you have 185 health, this is only going to give you a 16% increase. I would say Meat Shield is probably useful early game for most players, especially if you're new. Useful early game if you're playing on woe mode or if you're having trouble blocking or perfect blocking on medium. Late game, it's probably not going to be as useful because you're going to have already buffed yourself with the milk molars. I do typically use it most of the time. It might also be useful for boss fights. But honestly, I would say early game, it's probably an S tier just for giving you that 30% health bonus. As you play through the game, it's going to slowly degrade down where it's just more of an average one, and it's really going to depend on your play style based on how good your blocking skill is. Along the same line is going to be buff lungs. Buff lungs can be unlocked from the science shop for 3,000 raw science after turning in the red ant hill burgle chip. This is going to increase your max stamina by 30, so that's going to be plus 30% early game with the 100 base stamina. Later on, if you've maxed out your milk molars with the plus 55, it's only going to be 19%. One thing I did want to mention is both of these used to be plus 50. They were actually nerfed 
the plus 30 at some point. Not sure if that was 1.0 or before, but they definitely used to be plus 50. I did confirm that in early access, that they were plus 50. So this is going to be useful early game when you don't have that much stamina. Late game, maybe not so much. And especially if you're using the low cost stamina weapons or you're very good at managing your stamina, it's probably not going to be as useful. But I would definitely say if you're running around and you're trying to sprint everywhere, it's probably going to be useful because you'll get that extra stamina. So it'll let you get to and from places quicker. Next up is going to be Daredevil. This is the third one that can be unlocked via the science shop from Burgle. You get this ability to purchase this for 3,000 raw science after turning in the hedge Burgle chip. This reduces fall damage by 50%. This has been changed before 1.0. It actually gave you a, it guaranteed you not dying no matter if you had full health. So you could fall from basically like the sky and fall down and you would still have one HP left. It no longer does that. It only reduces fall damage by 50%. So be careful and make note of that change. Honestly, I pretty much never use this. I usually have a glider equipped. And honestly, I just don't ever, maybe with the trinkets in the game now and not being able to have those and a glider at the same time, it might be useful. But to be honest, I usually just have a glider equipped or I'm on the ground, so I don't really ever recommend using this. If you find yourself falling from high places, maybe you're building a base and you're falling and taking damage, or you're just not good at parkouring and stuff like that, it might be useful for those situations. Next up is going to be Grassmaster. Grassmaster is unlocked by cutting down 50, 200, or 500 sources of grass. This includes grass, dry grass, eel grass, and any types of weeds. It increases damage by 25, 50, or 100% uh, while harvesting grass. So basically, if you're Farming resources to build a base, it's going to be useful. It does not work against mushrooms for what I've been told. So it will only be useful for getting the grass planks, weed stem, stuff like that. It also gives you a 100% chance to return 5, 10, or 15 stamina instantly. If you have this unlocked at tier 3 and you're harvesting grass or weed stems, you should never run out of stamina because you're going to be chopping them down faster than you can burn through your stamina. Rock crackers next on our list. This is going to be unlocked by busting 25, 75, and 100 rocks. This would include pebbles, clay, marble, quartzite, as well as the candy pieces and the salt clusters. What this does is it increases damage for busting by 25, 50, or 100%. So if you're out farming rocks, you're out farming clay, stuff like that, this is super useful. This is really useful early game when it takes a long time to break the clay using the pebblet or the acorn shovel. So definitely recommend using this if you're harvesting clay or even if you're harvesting rocks or quartzite or stuff, or rocks, quartzite, marble, stuff like that. It'll be useful for those situations. It's kind of situational like the grass master, so you won't have it on all times, but it can be useful, especially if you put it, combine it with some other armors in the game like the firefly headlamp. Ant Annihilator is next. Ant Annihilator is unlocked by killing 15, 45, or 100 ant enemies. This includes red ants, black ants, fire ants, as well as the mant boss. So will, all these bonuses, it can be unlocked by killing any of them, and it will also, the bonuses will apply towards them. This increases attack damage by 5, 15, and 25% while attacking them, and it also reduces the damage you take from them at phase 3 only by 10%. Phase 1 and 2, you do not get to reduce damage. This is very useful for if you're going through the ant hills and clearing them out, specifically the red ant hill, if you're going through the black ant lab, if you're in the upper yard and you're going through the fire ant hill, you're going to want to make sure you have this equipped. You also want to make sure you have this equipped for the super mixers, the first, two of the super mixers up in the upper yard, the one that's south of the tire and the one that is, I believe, under the lawnmower. Those two both have fire ants in them, so it'll be useful for that. It's also useful for using in the final defense, which is going to have fire ants in that as well. So this is actually pretty useful. I would definitely recommend using in those situations. Obviously, in general, it's not going to be useful, but in those specific situations, very useful. Next is going to be Coup de Grass. This is a mutation that from the time I started playing the game until recently, I pretty much put on immediately as soon as I got it. The way to unlock this is actually to, there's two phases for it. One is going to be unlocking the four leaf or discovering the four leaf clover. The four leaf clover is going to be down here. It's going to be between this wooden plank, which where the spider, wolf spider spawns under and the flooded zone over here. So the Eastern flooded zone. You'll see here on the map where it's located. You'll actually need to be going to the water over here. So right on the edge on this Western edge here, the left edge, between the yoked girth and then the wooden plank here and the chop can, you'll see it's right about over here. You're going to be looking for a leaf. Underneath that leaf is going to be a tunnel. I'd recommend having a slime lantern or a light source. You don't really need swimming gear because it's not that far. You'll basically swim down that tunnel, go to discover the four-leaf clover. That's going to give you one of the phases. Typically, that's the first phase. There's also a bunch of upgrade rocks down there and a scab along the way. The second phase or the one that's, you cannot, it doesn't matter which order you unlock them in. But you can't normally it's the cooter, normally you find the clover and then go up here to the Minotaur maze, which is on top of the picnic table. There's a 20 sided die. You're gonna need to knock that so the 20 is on top. That'll give you the other phase for it. And that can be done. Typically, you're gonna use a club for that. So the ant club or a tier three club. Also, some tier three weapons to do it. Funny enough, the crow crossbow can actually knock it over. So those are the ways to unlock that. Once you unlock it, what it's gonna do is gonna give you for phase one only 2.5% plus critical chance, critical hit chance, and then 5% for phase two. This used to be 5 and 10%. At one point, I thought it was reported as being 10 and 25%. Essentially, I just stopped using this because I don't find using the crit build, unless you have like the maxed out endgame gear crit build, 
I just don't recommend using crit anymore early game. It just doesn't seem worth it, especially with these nerfs making this only 2.5%. So if you're not aware, the critical hit chance by default is 0%. So this is only going to make you go from 0 to 2.5 or 0 to 5. That means at phase 2, every 20 attacks is going to give you a chance for a crit. On average, it's just not worth using in my opinion. However, if you do use it, there's another mutation we'll pair, that you're going to want to pair with it, which we'll talk about in just a second. Next up is going to be Juicy. Juicy, in my opinion, is an S tier mutation, specifically on WoW mode. It's not as needed on other, on medium or mild, but it's definitely useful. The way you unlock this is by discovering five juice box POIs. There are lots of juice boxes on the map, but only five of them count towards this. One's going to be the Armed Raspberry Puncha, which you're going to find on the shore here of the Koi Pond. So just outside the oak tree over here on the Koi Pond. Two of them are going to be in the grasslands. One's going to be right next to the Mysterious Machine. That's a Tropico Puncho. So if you leave the Mysterious Machine, head towards the Oak Tree, you're going to run into this one. If you follow it over a little bit to the right, you're going to find the Lemon Crime Puncho. Next up is going to be the Apricot Puncho, which you're going to find up in the hedge. So when you're doing the lab, you're definitely going to run into this one. There's also a Milk Muller on top of it. And then the fifth one that counts towards is going to be the Peach Fuzz Puncho box here, which is in the haze. I would say this is definitely worth unlocking as soon as possible when you're playing through the game, especially on WoW mode, because the Thirst Drain in WoW mode is super excessive. The Hunger Drain is equally excessive. However, you can mitigate that, mitigate that by eating meals. You can also combine this with the Hedge, what's the Hedge Lord smoothie to further reduce Thirst Drain. So definitely try to get that unlocked as soon as possible. Natural Explorer is up next. This is one that I honestly very rarely have ever used before 1.0. They have sent, after 1.0, I believe it was patch 103 or 104, they buffed this thing to make it an S tier mutation that I would use 100% of the time, this is one of the mutations that when I unlock, once I unlock it, I'm going to have it on 100% of the time. This is unlocked by discovering 20, 50, or 80 landmarks. What it does is it increases your movement speed by 20%, 35%, or 50%. Now, when you're in combat, it's going to make you go back to your normal speed, but as soon as you get out of combat, it's going to buff you back up there. That means you're going to be able to run super, super fast for great amounts of time. Now, in terms of landmarks, there's tons of them all over the map. I'm not going to go through all of them, but basically almost everything on here that's a yellow or purple is going to be a landmark. So you'll be able to find, I believe there's more than 80 of them. I don't think you have to find every single one of them to get it. So I would definitely recommend as soon as you get that, putting it on because that even at phase one with that 20% movement speed is noticeable. Next up is Martine. Martine's unlocked by discovering four underwater locations. These include the Wedding Ring, Sunken Pot, Pond Hatch, Pond Dome, T-Rex, Pond Lab, and Depth's Mouths. If we go to the map, not all of those. There's others on here that don't count towards it, like the field stations. But you can see the T-Rex is right here, the Pond Hatch is here, the Pond Dome's here. If you're trying to get the Pond Dome, you're having trouble with it, go inside of it where the computer is and look straight up. That's how I unlocked it. It's kind of weird how to unlock that one. We also have the Pond Lab, which you'll discover once you swim underneath of it. I think if you have to turn all the switches on to get that one. Then we have the Wedding Ring, the Sunken Pot, and then the Depth's Mouth. So as long as you find four of those, you'll, it'll give you Mertine. What Mertine does is it increases your swim speed by 15% and reduces oxygen consumption by 10%. So it's going to let you stay underwater longer and swim faster. Definitely useful if you're down there harvesting sunken bones or you're harvesting koi scales or you're just doing some farming underneath the water. Maybe you're trying to kill diving bell spiders or farm some gold cards. Definitely worth putting on in addition to the swimming gear as you're underneath the water in the koi pond and even useful in the upper koi pond. Next up is going to be Cardio Fan. I did a video on Cardio Fan a long time ago, giving it an F tier rating. It has since been super buffed and I would say it's probably worth using now, although it's going to take you quite a while to unlock it. You unlock this by fully exhausting your stamina 100, 250, or 500 times. That means your stamina bar has to go all the way down to zero. So if I go out of here into my menu, you can see when I'm running around, my stamina is going to start depleting on the left, but it's going to be depleting really slowly because I have high stamina. That has to actually go all the way down to the point where you can hear the your teen basically breathing deeply. So that's what, you'll have to do that. I would recommend unlocking this early on if you can. So basically, if you're running around, you're close to having your stamina low, just let it drain all the way down. That way you can get it unlocked quickly. This increases your stamina regenerate 10, 15, and 20%, depending on the phase. It also reduces the time it takes for your stamina to regenerate after becoming fully exhausted by 10, 20, and 30%. So like I said, it got a super buff. I would recommend using this, especially if you have trouble managing your stamina or if you're using weapons or a setup that's just reducing your, uh, basically using a lot of stamina. Maybe you're using a heavy armor with a heavy weapon. It's going to be useful for that as well. Or even if you're using the crossbows now because they did super nerf crossbows by increasing their stamina usage. So Cardio Fan in my book has, has gone from an F tier, probably up to a B tier, maybe an A tier, depending on how good are you, you are at managing your stamina. Next up is going to be Reliable Friend. This is the only one I don't have unlocked on the save because I've been playing this one solo. It can only be unlocked by playing co-op. It's unlocked by reviving an ally player 5, 15, or 30 times. 
What that means is when the player goes down, you have to revive them before they die. You can re It reduces the time it takes to revive an ally by 25, 50, and 75%, depending on the phase. There's three phases. This is useful if you're playing co-op and you guys and people have trouble staying alive, or maybe you're in a boss fight or something like that. It's definitely going to be useful because you can revive people very, very quickly at phase three. Fresh Defense is next on our list of mutations. This is going to be unlocked by consuming one, five, or ten mint shards. These are the mint candies you get from breaking the, the mint shards you get from breaking the mint candies. This reduces gas and burning damage taken by 25, 50, and 50%. Not sure why it's not 75%. And then it reduces the sizzle accumulation by 25, 50, and 75. So it used to, I believe, reduce the burn by 75, and I believe the gas by 75. I'm not sure if that's an intentional change or if it's not. But essentially, if you're playing, if you're fighting bombardier beetles, if you are going inside of the, if you're going in the sandbox, if you're trying to get charcoal, it's going to be useful for putting these on. It also will give you sizzle protection against the ladybird larva attacks that give you sizzle. So it's useful for those situations, kind of situational. I wouldn't recommend using it all the time, but it does have its situational uses. Next up is going to be spicy safety. This is unlocked by consuming one or three pieces of candy. So that's going to be the spicy cha-cha candy. This reduces damage taken from smashing and stabbing attacks by 25 and 50%, depending on the phase. On the screen right now, I'm going to show you a list of all the different enemy attacks that are both the smashing and the stabbing. Surprising to me was the fact that wolf spiders are not on here, because I typically use this when fighting wolf spiders. So I'll leave this list on here. I'll also leave a link for the wiki page where you can find all the attack types so you can see when it's most useful. But essentially, it's useful for fighting against these enemies, but... Basically, like the flying enemies, bees and mosquitoes, and then, of course, some of the beefier enemies. So it's not useful in all situations, but it's going to be useful in some situations. So kind of makes it a situational mutation like many of these. So just make sure you have it on when it's when it's relevant and not have it on when it's not. Next up is going to be our first boss-related mutation. This is Mom's Genes. You unlock this by defeating the Broodmother for the first time. What this does is it gives your attacks a, against creatures a 10% chance to summon a spiraling minion at the enemy's location. The spider has 25 HP. So basically what this does is it's useful in specific situations by itself. As an example, fighting black ox beetles, if it spawns in the spiderlings, you'll, the black ox beetles will get distracted by it. Could also be useful in some boss fights or if you're fighting a group of enemies because they'll get distracted and focus on the spiderlings instead of you. It's much more useful if you pair it with the mom's or with the broodmother trinket, which gives the spiderlings a 100% chance to apply poison damage. So by itself, not that great except for situational. If you have the broodmother trinket, it's going to be much more useful. Next up is going to be Mithridatism. This is unlocked by killing 1, 5, and 10 wolf spiders. This reduces the poison damage you take by 25, 50, and 75%. Now, one thing to note here is that the wolf spiders give poison damage, the orb weaver juniors give poison damage, the broodmother gives poison damage, the black widow gives poison damage, but the black widow also gives venom damage, and I believe the black widowlings give poison damage. I'm not sure about the venom. I think they only get poison, not venom. But the Black Widow gives Venom damage, so this will not protect you against the Venom damage when you're fighting a Black Widow, but you definitely should still have it on because if you don't have it on, you're going to get hit by the Poison and the Venom at the same time, which means you're going to die very quickly. So, of course, this is going to be useful if you're not good at perfect blocking the Wolf Spider attacks. If you perfect block attacks from Spiders or anything that gives Poison, you will not take the Poison damage, but this is going to be very, very useful, especially early game, especially if you're new to the game, so you're not constantly getting wiped out by the Wolf Spiders. Truffle Tussle is next on our list. This is unlocked by killing the infected Ladybug mini boss at the end of the Haze Lab. What this does is it gives your unarmed attacks a 10% chance to cause a 400 range AOE explosion that deals 100 explosive damage to all enemies in range. Now, do note this does not count toward, this does not benefit from Lil Fist, and it does not get a benefit from the Power Droplet, which is a trinket. So if you're going unarmed, it's still probably worth using. I think, I'm not sure if it's still bugged. It used to be bugged where it was actually working with other types of combat as well, other weapons. But if you're going unarmed, you're definitely going to put this on going to be useful i would not recommend using it honestly because i don't recommend going unarmed but it can be useful if you're in that situation guard dog is one of the newer mutations that was added just before 1.0 and it's been fully you can get the fully phase three now this is unlocked by completing one four and nine defense point objectives such as the mixtures and also the charcoal defense so when you're trying to unlock the spicy coltana that counts towards this what it does is it increases attack damage during against enemies during a base base defense so this includes waft emitters this includes faction raids this includes the mixers this includes the java matic and of course the coltana defense the little mini game for that gives you 10 25 or 50 percent more damage 100 percent recommend using this especially on the super mixers as well as when you're doing the final defense especially if it have it unlocked all the way getting an extra 50 percent damage makes that fight so much easier trapper peeper is a brand new mutation added in 1.0 
What this is, how you unlock this, or how you're supposed to unlock it, is you're supposed to get 20, 45, or 59 gold cards, 59 being the max that's in the game right now. However, the way it's working now is you're actually getting credit for duplicate gold cards. As you can see, I have it completely unlocked right now, but if I go to my data tab, I do not have all the gold cards on this save. So I believe it's double counting the gold cards right now because if you kill a creature, it has a chance of dropping a gold card. Well, once you get that gold card, you have it, but it also is every time you kill that creature again after that, you can still get another gold card. It just doesn't give you the notification. More likely than not, that's going to get fixed. If it does, this mutation is going to be super hard to unlock all the way because getting all the gold cards takes forever. As I was mentioning earlier about the crit builds, if you're using Cooter Grass, you're going to want to make sure you have this on because what it gives you, phase one is 20% extra crit damage, phase two is 40% extra, and phase three is 60% extra. As a note, the base critical hit damage in the game is seven one is 170 percent so fully having this maxed out will give you 230 percent more damage when you get a crit again i don't really recommend using crit builds very often unless you have a super end game special build for it early game it's just not going to be worth it and honestly if they fix this you're probably not going to get this unlocked before you finish the game unless you sit there and want to 100 get everything this is not, unlocking all the all the mutation phases is not needed for the 100 record report card so i don't imagine most people are going to get this unlocked Next up is going to be another boss mutation. This is going to be Mansterious Stranger. This is unlocked after defeating the Mant. What this does is it gives your attacks on a creature a 1% chance to summon a miniature version of the Mant. And what it's going to do is it's going to have 300 health, 3,000 health, and it's going to fight for you. It does a couple of the Mant's abilities, which are Smash, Punch, and 2-Hit Combo. Do note, it does currently damage the player. Not sure if that's intended or not. I did use it during the final defense before they nerfed the final defense because it was super hard, and I was like, maybe it'll help out. The Mant was definitely doing some damage but it also was doing damage to me so be careful of that honestly with this one percent chance not that great i will say if you're using it with mom's genes and the broodmother trinket it will give this guy 100 percent chance to apply the poison damage so it might be useful for that situation but honestly i don't really recommend using this apex predator is unlocked by defeating the mantis for the first time what this does is it gives a buff to the uh, club of the mother demon as well as the scythe of the blossoms so for the club of the mother demon it gives your attacks with this weapon a 20 percent chance to apply a buff for 10 seconds, which causes hits from this weapon to have a 100% chance to venom enemies for 35 damage a second for 10 seconds. That means you can do up to 350 damage with that. The only problem is looking at how frequent this procs and at the attack speed of the Club of the Mother Demon, it's going to take approximately 12.35 seconds for this thing to proc. So in that case, even though it does do a ton of damage, it's probably only going to be useful if you're fighting the very, very beefiest enemies. And even in that case, I don't recommend using two handed clubs that often anyway. So I'm not sure if it'd be worth using for that situation. With the Scythe of the Blossoms, however, this mutation will give you a 20% chance to apply a buff for yourself, which will increase the attack speed with all weapons. However, it does reduce the attack damage of all weapons except for unarmed and daggers for some reason by 75%. So essentially, when you get this thing to proc, you're probably going to just keep the Scythe going. It's going to give you a 25% attack speed on that weapon. It will proc every 3.94 seconds, so it's definitely going to be better than the Club of the Mother Demon. I would say if you're using the Scythe of the, the, Scythe of the Blossoms, it's probably worth using this. Maybe throw in the Assassin, even though the Assassin's not that great with it. If you're getting that extra 25% attack speed, the Assassin mutation is going to proc more often. So combining those two could make for some pretty cool builds. The penultimate mutation is going to be Corporate Kickback. This is unlocked by killing Director Schmechter. This gives blocks and att blocking attack has a 5% chance to give you 100% lifesteal for 5 seconds. Honestly, I don't find this very useful because it's only a one, in tw one out of every 20 blocks it's going to go off. How often are you blocking during combat? So one out of every 20 blocks... It's going to give you 100% lifesteal. So when it does proc, it's really useful. But the fact that it's going to proc so infrequently, I don't recommend using it, honestly. I'd probably rate it mid-tier just because if it had a better chance, I'd rather see it have a better chance of proccing and have a lower lifesteal. But right now, I would not recommend using it, or I don't use it personally myself. Last but not least, is going to be Shocking Dismissal. This is unlocked by defeating the Assistant Manager. This is The effect for this is going to be blocking an attack has a 15% chance to cause your next attack to proc a 500 range AoE shock explosion dealing 75 shock damage and 40 stun. As far as I know, none of the enemies in the game are currently resistant, weak or resistant to shock. So I don't know why this, I don't see, this isn't really providing any super benefit there. It's basically just giving you 75 extra damage. And of course the stun, when it does go off, it's going to be, in my opinion, better than the corporate kickback just because it has a higher proc chance. But at the same time, because it's relying on blocks and because it's only going to be like, what, one every like seven, six and a half to seven blocks, it's not going to go off very often. So I wouldn't recommend using that. So that's every mutation in the game and how to unlock them. Real quick, just to highlight the ones that I would definitely recommend using all the time. If you're using a Spear Javelinier, to me, as an S-tier mutation. If you're using Daggers or even the Scythe of the Blossoms, the Assassin is going to be worth using. Don't I would never recommend using Sharpshooter because it very rarely procs. Chopper is really not worth using. And Blade Master, those are going to be the F-tiers. The others here are kind of going to be like a in the mid-tier, so maybe use them, maybe not. 
And then down here, Natural Explorer is going to be an S tier to use all the time, as well as Juicy being an S tier, specifically on Woe mode. On Medium, it's going to be probably a lower tier because you're not going to be getting thirsty as fast, but definitely worth using. The rest of them are going to be situational. Probably want to recommend having Mithridatism on most of the time until you get down those perfect blocks against the Wolf Spiders. And then, of course, you definitely want to have it on when you're fighting the Black Widows. So those are my ranks for all the mutations of the game. Let me know if any if you have any ways you're using them differently in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to smash the like button. And here's another video you might want to watch as well.